Another basic strategy we know is really robust from cognitive science research is what we call spaced practice or just spacing. And it seems, again, pretty intuitive where we are simply spacing out what we're trying to learn instead of cramming it all at once. So we've probably all had the experience of cramming the night before an exam. And that does pretty well, you get an A. But then a week later, a month later, years later, you can't remember what you learned in that class. And so it's really important based on this research to space things out. Another example is, uh, for instance, an athlete isn't necessarily going to start practicing for a game the night before a game. Athletes definitely space out their practice. Musicians space out their practice. But when it comes to everyday life, we have a tendency to cram things all at once. A common example where people frequently forget information is when they meet people at a party and you meet someone, you introduce yourself, you learn their face and their name, and we might have a tendency to do a couple of, to use a couple of different strategies to remember that person once we've met them. So one strategy people often do is they say that person's name over and over in their heads. Uh, so, Nick, 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 while they're having a conversation. So in some ways, sometimes people are multitasking. They're trying to hold this conversation with someone they've just met, but they're also rehearsing that name in their head over and over. So that's one strategy people use. Another one that uh, I've heard people say is that in a conversation, they'll just try to use someone's name two or three times. So, hi Nick, nice to meet you. And then later on in the conversation, wow Nick, that's really cool. And then at the end, so nice to meet you Nick. And what we find with all of those strategies is that they work in the short term. I can remember Nick's name really well, but they don't work in the long term. So if I happen to run into that person a week later at a coffee shop, chances are I'm not gonna remember their name. So research on retrieval practice shows that you not only need to retrieve a name, just like retrieving someone's name three times within a conversation, but to retrieve their name over time. And this is something we call spacing, where it takes some practice, but for instance, I've trained myself that later in the day, I almost remind myself to retrieve someone's name. Uh, and then later the next day, I remind myself, all right, what do I need to retrieve? What can I think about from the previous day? So I space out that retrieval as opposed to cramming it in a super short amount of time where I just say a name and rehearse it over and over, kind of like we would do with phone numbers. And it's a little different from just saying a name across a 10 minute conversation. It's really important to space that retrieval out over time. In research on spacing done by my colleagues Kelly Taylor and Doug Rohrer, all they did was compare college students completing math problems. And the college students either completed 10 math problems in one week, or they completed five math problems in one week and then five math problems in the second week. So same number of problems, a very simple comparison of 10 problems in one week or five problems across two weeks. And what they found is that uh, in the short term, students who had done the 10 problems or crammed them all into one week, in the short term had much higher performance. But four weeks later, you see this huge amount of forgetting. So when the college students completed five problems spread, or 10 problems spread across two weeks, now their forgetting was almost half of what it was if the college students did all 10 problems all at once. One of the main reasons that strategies like retrieval practice, spacing, interleaving, elaboration are so beneficial for learning and memory is what we call a desirable difficulty. That aspect of being effortful, pulling information to mind, challenging ourselves by spacing learning out over time, mixing things up, is that difficulty that improves learning. We often think about learning as something that should be easy, fluent. What comes to us easily we think of as good learning, and it can be, but then we typically forget really quickly. 
When learning is more difficult, more challenging, that's when we see long-term benefits.